calcium homeostasis about 99% of our body calcium is in the skeleton and the remaining 1% is in blood and body fluids out of that within blood 50% is ionic calcium which is the biologically active form 40% is bound to protein mainly albumin and the remaining 10% is complexed with anions so what is the clinical relevance since 40% of calcium is bound to albumin serum albumin levels affect total blood calcium levels whereas ionic calcium is unaffected let's see regulators of calcium there are three regulators parathyroid hormone vitamin d and calcitonin what happens when there is low calcium in blood then parathyroid glands those brown ones they secret parathyroid hormone it acts at two sites one is bone another one is kidney in the bone it promotes calcium resorption thereby increasing blood calcium whereas in the kidneys it increases calcium reabsorption and phosphorus excretion as well as it converts 25 hydroxy vitamin d to 125 dihydroxy vitamin d which is the active form of vitamin d this vitamin d in turn acts in the gut and increases calcium absorption in the gut thereby increasing blood calcium so parathyroid hormone and vitamin d increase blood calcium whereas calcitonin is supposed to decrease blood calcium but it plays a very minor role what happens to ionic calcium when there is acidosis or alkalosis under normal conditions hydrogen is also bound to albumin similar to calcium whereas in acidosis there is increased hydrogen so there is less binding of calcium to albumin this results in increased ionic calcium so in acidosis that is increased ionic calcium whereas in alkalosis there is decreased ionic calcium finally few numbers to remember total blood calcium is about 8.5 mg per deciliter to 10.5 mg per deciliter ionic calcium is 50% of that which is about 4.2 to 5.2 mg per deciliter